Welcome back, pet parents. I am so excited for today's episode because, like y'all know me, I am a big fan of rotation. I rotate brands. I rotate proteins. I rotate my supplements. I rotate everything for my dog. If only I were as good with myself, right? (laughs) (laughs) When we moved to Texas, I had the hardest time finding enough brands that were easily available to me and my local pet store to have adequate rotation for my dog. So I had to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, what is out there now? What can I get? And one company that I found delivers to my door, which (laughs) hallelujah, right? This is the, the best part of our convenience society is when things are delivered directly to our door. And what is that company, not only are they delivering to the door, by the way, but they have incredible quality products. It's Viva Raw. And today I have Zach from Viva Raw with me. I'm so excited to introduce you to my audience. Thank you so much for being here, Zach. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited to, to chat. Yeah. So as I was saying, I just, you know, I, I don't mind going to my local pet store. And in fact, I love going to my local pet store. My husband hates me going to my local pet store. (laughs) I want to see everything. I want to know what's new. I want to know what, you know, my friend actually owns the local pet shop that I shop at. I want to know like what she has brought in and why and what she has taken out and why. And I spend way too much time and money there. (laughs) And so (laughs) when I find a really good product that I can actually have delivered to my house, not only am I happy about it because that is one less trip I have to make, but my husband rejoices that I don't overspend by browsing a store. (laughs) (laughs) And we can all kind of uh, get on board with that feeling and that idea. So Not to say that our pet stores are bad. They're not. I love our local pet shops. But your product is different from what I even can get at my local pet shop, which is why I really Mm -hmm. love including it in the rotation for my dog. And I will tell you, I'm going to let you talk, I promise. But I will tell you, in the past couple of months, I've been having to deal with a lot of food aversion in my dog. And there are um, only a handful of products that I have been consistently mm-hmm. able to actually get her to eat. And Viva Raw is one of them. And oh, I've just so been happy. so thankful for that. I think one, it's the freshness of it. Um, and you, obviously you'll tell me a little bit more about this in a minute, you know, the small batches that you, that you make and, and the freshness and the quality. Um, I, you know, our pets know that they know when something has yeah. been sitting in the fridge for too long, or maybe it sat yeah. around, you know, in a warehouse too long, blah, 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 all the things you can probably talk more to that than I can. But I think that has a big part of like yeah. why she will actually continue to eat that, even though we've been dealing, dealing with some food aversion things with her. So <laughs> um, tell yeah, me a absolutely. little bit about, about Viva Raw. I know um, uh, Jen wasn't able to join us, but you and Jen both, you know, created yeah. this company. Uh, why you did it and what the actual product is. Like, I, I think yeah. a lot of people might be like, okay, it's a raw food brand and kind of lump all raw raw food brands together when we, you and I know that's nowhere near the truth. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I appreciate the intro. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share a little bit about just like what our journey was like. I think you touched on actually a lot of the points um, about Viva that, you know, those are also reasons why we started this company. Um, to be honest, in the very beginning, like um, a lot of pet parents like yourself, like many others, uh, we started from a place of having, you know, our own pup. Um, her name is Karu. Uh, she's a slightly bigger pup now. But uh, when we got her, we were just so invested in making sure that she had the absolute best nutrition possible. We wanted her to live a really long and healthy life. Um, both Jen and I have, you know, had previous pets that didn't fare as well on like dry diets. Um, and when we sort of, you know, got our own uh, dog, we sort of knew, to the, knew that we wanted to do something differently. So um, that's when we sort of like 
went down the whole rabbit hole as many of us do, right? Like in regards to nutrition and then went all the way to just raw feeding um, and as regards to like how to balance diets, all that. Uh, but in the very beginning, we were spending a ton of time just like home making her meals. Uh, and she was thriving. We were driving like two, three hours on the weekend sourcing from like smaller local farms. Um, and just we thought what we were doing was amazing for her. And it truly was. Um, but I think that the tipping point was when we started like, you know, some really serious nine to five jobs. And we realized that we didn't have all this time left um, to do the absolute best for her, which is when we started looking for some retail options. And I think at that point in time, um, it was super tricky to find anything that we felt was of similar quality and freshness um, to what we were doing from a homemade perspective. And for us, it just felt like this huge gap, like what we're, you know, going to the store for. Some of it was um, a little bit more freezer burn. It was always really like finely ground. So we didn't really know what was in, you know, the food itself. Um, it felt like, you know, maybe they could be putting some things in there that, you know, like were not of the quality that they were sort of stating. Um, it just seemed a little bit not, you know, not as homemade fresh as we sort of wanted in terms of like what we would consider like a really healthy raw diet. If this is what we wanted to, you know, put our dollars behind, we wanted it to be the absolute best. Um, so that's when we, you know, decided to start Viva because we just wanted to, honestly, at the very beginning, we just wanted to offer that for ourselves. And we thought maybe some other people would benefit from this as well. Um, in the very beginning, we were actually like making local deliveries around North Carolina. So North Carolina, um, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but that's where we're headquartered and where we manufacture everything. Um, but in the very beginning, it was just me and Jennifer driving around, uh, you know, delivering some like very small batches of meals to people in North Carolina, which is when we realized that, you know, people really, really loved the quality because back then we were also just sourcing from like local North Carolina farmers as well. So we knew exactly where the food was coming. Um, and then it, it essentially got to a point where we realized like people really valued the convenience aspect of, of us sending it to their door. Right. So we just wanted to make it as available as possible. Um, but with, the freshness and the quality of sourcing from like smaller local farms. Um, we wanted to keep that quality within the product and not lose it, even if we were going to make it as convenient as sort of direct to door delivery. So that's what we have focused on a lot. And, and right now, today, we offer um, frozen, complete and balanced meals for both dogs and cats. Um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on as well is that we have a lot of different protein options. So um, all the way from your, I guess you could say, I don't want to say more normal, that sounds negative, but the more common ones like chicken and turkey and beef, but also like duck and rabbit, which are great like novel offerings, especially for pets with um, sensitivities or um, are dealing with uh, some of those sort of issues. So um, yeah, like we we ship everything sort of direct to door. I will also mention, because you, you mentioned this in the beginning, um, but we are sort of um, starting to work with some different sort of retail partners as well. Um, nothing super major, but um, just on the sort of we're testing it out to to see like how our retail partners like um, what we have and how it sort of sells in their shops. But if you know, like a local retailer who you would like to have our products, you can always have them reach out to us and we're happy to work with them through those options as well. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I didn't yeah. Know that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you could you could have your friend for sure um, reach out to us. We'd be happy to chat. <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, I, I really love the idea of like lo the, what you're saying with the local farmers. Mm -hmm. I one of the questions I wanted to ask you was um, about formulating the diets, and yeah. did you and Jen do it yourself, or did you, you know, hire a formulator? How did that go down? Yeah, that's a great question. So, no, Jen and I did not do it ourselves. Uh, even though we would like to think, you know, we know what we're doing. <laughs> so we had the help of a, a lot of different experts um, within the field. Um, so even since the very beginning, we uh, when we first launched the company, uh, we were producing sort of like a base mix, what we describe mm -hmm. in raw feeding as like prey model raw. So it was just like mm -hmm. meat, bone and organ. Um, but even when we first came out with those products, I mean, we came out with those products because we you know, we didn't have the resources to produce a complete and you know, off the cuff. So we had those, but even at the very beginning, we knew that we wanted to produce a complete and balanced formula. 
Um, it just took way longer than we expected, to be honest, because it's such a robust process. Um, and I think if you talk with anyone sort of like in this space, uh, it's, it's a way larger ordeal than what you think going into it. Um, so in the beginning, we started talking to different um, formulators, experts, um, all the way from like nutritionists to vet nutritionists. Um, and so what we sort of realized was that everyone had a little bit different of a perspective. Um, about formulating. Everyone wanted to use slightly different ingredients. Some were very focused on using synthetic ingredients. Some were uh, a little less focused on that. And we just knew that like there were some sort of ideologies that we had to guide everyone towards in terms of like what we wanted for our food. And then from there, like have, have like the best of what I would describe, like everyone's sort of philosophies come together. So we actually uh, consulted with a couple of different people when formulating our food. I think notably, um, we started working with Dr. Barbara Royal in the, in pretty early on. Um, she was the, if, if you've seen Pet Fooled, she was the vet who was uh, in, in that documentary. Um, and then we started working with um, a nutritionist named James Pendergast. Uh, and he actually comes from um, the Darwin side of things. He, he used to be a formulator for Darwin. So we had a lot of like our, we were very, very lucky early on to have a wealth of experience just like, you know, on, on our side. We also work like a, a PhD nutritionist as well called Dr. Richard Patton. But a lot of this was, we sort of like melded everyone's sort of philosophies and their knowledge, um, just like decades and decades of experience. Um, but there were certain things that we wanted to stick to our guns on. Like, for example, like we wanted to source the absolute best in terms of um, like humanely raised, no antibiotics or hormones ever from like smaller, medium sized farms, like that sort of product. And then also we had a really strong philosophy behind using whole food supplements for um, balancing the diets themselves. Um, we didn't want to take shortcuts and, you know, just put synthetic supplements in there just because it's cheaper and it's faster to be honest and easier. Uh, it took us like a year, a solid year before we got to a form, like a formulation because it just took so long to find which whole foods would work for us, find suppliers that were consistent. Um, I think the trickiest part about using whole food supplements and why people don't do it isn't just because it's more expensive, but also because it's less consistent. Um, it's really difficult to find suppliers that will, you know, have certain levels of, you know, guarantee certain levels of, for example, I'd say like a really good example is like kelp powder. Kelp powder is commonly used for iodine, um, but not all you know, kelp sources or kelp suppliers guarantee a certain level of iodine content within, you know, the kelp powder. So it's up to us as a company who's producing like, you know, food for a lot of people's dogs and cats that we know exactly how much iodine is in there. So it's like what we're adding as a whole food source, um, we know is going to be meeting that because otherwise it could vary from lot to lot, from batch to batch and be very inconsistent. So a lot of that also just took a ton of lab testing and going back and forth with the suppliers and um, seeing who would be the best fit for what specific ingredients. So yeah, it's, it was a tricky process. I bet. I'm actually currently studying um, a professional canine nutritionist course. And yeah. holy moly, I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't consider myself dumb or thick or like, you know, hard headed. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but some like i you know it, we kind of a lot of uh, pet parents specifically mm -hmm. who are trying to talk to the general public i don't i don't like the word influencer but you know people who are out there trying yeah. to like sway people to feeding fresh foods sure. we we try to make it sound so simple and so easy and you know it doesn't have to be hard that is kind of the the messaging yeah. to get across. And while in some cases that's very true in other cases, it's really not. And then when I got into this course, I'm like, <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> I, I um, hear you. I, I definitely hear you. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it is because, you know, and something like you said, like iodine is so, everything is vitally important. Right. But you know, I feel like, especially when we, when we're talking about iodine, like, I don't know, for some reason, maybe it's just all of the like experiences that I have had recently since, um, starting, you know, a bunch of courses that I've been in and stuff and yeah. dealing with different pet parent sure. clients. 
the thyroid seems so <sighs> ugh, like delicate, yeah. <laughs> I guess would be the best yeah. word. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like it is so delicate. And of course, I have a cat that was recently diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. So that mm. maybe it's just like really like top of mind yeah. for me all the time. I'm like super yeah. hyper focused on thyroid and iodine levels <laughs> because yeah. I've see, just had it so much around me. Um, so that it's interesting that you brought the same thing up because I'm like, apparently yeah. the universe yeah. needs me to focus on this right now. <laughs> and it's, it, it is important. It's not just like, I, I think like not just like kelp powder, but for example, like even the sources, like the cuts that you're using, like mm -hmm. as an example, there was a situation in which like a raw company was using like, I think it was like cuts of beef meat from like around the neck area. And like that was causing issues for some pets with hyperthyroidism, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you have to be really intentional about um, what you're using at every single level. For example, like for some of our recipes, we do use, for example, like chicken necks. But we actually, you know, have the supplier guarantee that the thyroid is removed from like all of those things, right? Because it 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 is important to be so detail oriented when it comes to, you know, our pets. I think especially, you know, when you think about it, like to be honest, when when Jen and I first started this company, uh, we were just feeding our own dog and we just wanted to do better for more people, right? But as you get into a place where you're feeding so many people's dogs and cats. Um, it becomes that much more important that like everything you're doing, you know exactly why you're doing it. You know exactly why you're putting this ingredient in. You know exactly why you're putting this amount of that ingredient in um, because there's no like, to, if for lack of better words, like room for error. Um, I think like sometimes it's, you know, can be a little overkill if you do it for your own dog and on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, not everything has to be balanced. But um, when you're like feeding many people's dogs and cats mm -hmm. it's super super important that these things are sort of like paid attention to yeah that is a very good distinction and i appreciate you making that because diy raw feeders for sure they are uh, you know very much it, it it can be easy stop over complicating it rotation 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 yeah. and we're you know we're good and but like, as you just said, um, if you are a company making food or if you are a professional nutritionist, you have to be spot on uh, just because of the, the liability issue that, that yeah. you have. <laughs> you have yeah, there's, there's a lot of risk there. Yeah. Which is also why you see, um, like, unfortunately, like big kibble recalls around like toxicity, like vitamin D toxicity, right? Like that's the type of thing that you have to you see and you realize why it's so important, right, to to make sure that like from a nutritional standpoint, everything is done really, really well and that everything is absolutely solid. So it's also why I really appreciate that you and Jen are so passionate about doing as much whole food as possible because that is, yeah. it's not, you know, I think it's becoming, it's starting to become a little more common, but it is still pretty difficult to find for the average pet parent. Um, yeah finding foods that truly are, you know, as, as whole food dense as possible, um, isn't the easiest thing to do. And, uh, you know, of course, when we think about, as you were saying, um, excesses or, um, you know, toxicity, whether you have something that you have way too much of, or if you have something that uh, you just don't yeah. have enough of one way or the other, it, it when we're dealing with whole foods, it can be like, like we were saying with DIY raw feeders, rotate, 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 and you're, you're good. Like don't overcomplicate it. Keep it, keep it simple. But when we're dealing with synthetics, that's a whole different story. It can be very easy to overdo it and to cause toxicity because the body just doesn't utilize synthetics in the same way as as you would a whole whole food supplement the the nutrients that the body can pull and derive from from whole foods so i appreciate yeah. that so much and i really want to like hone in on that with your food because yeah, i think absolutely. it's one of the most important parts of your food yeah absolutely yeah happy to have to discuss and i i think that you're absolutely right i think one of those things about like synthetic ingredients is um, ultimately they're, they're produced from labs, right? So what you end up having is, um, while they do hit a particular nutrient requirement, 
a lot of the times they're very, very concentrated. So I think there's like very little room for like air, right? Like if you add a little bit more like, you know, to talk mushrooms and to our food, you're not going to, you know, imbalance something to the degree of if you've had like some sort of synthetic vitamin D um, into some food. So just like with whole foods as well, there's other, you know, benefits of course, if, because I think like with nutrition, I mean, I can't say that I know everything about nutrition. You know, none of us do. I think there's still so many things that we're learning on a day-to-day -day basis. But like one of those things that we know we don't know, but know enough to be able to say this is that like there are complex interactions when it comes to whole foods, right? Like when we add in something like, you know, like help, it's not just for the iodine. There are other micronutrients that it provides benefits for um, that are not truly understood but like it's different from just adding a synthetic iodine source from. So those are of, of course the same reasons why, you know, humans, we, we don't try and just eat, I don't know what we could eat was just be like bread and then some synthetic, you know, nutrients <laughs> or something like that, right? It's just something like really ridiculous, but of course um, we know enough that it's, that's not gonna be optimal for us and the same as for pets. Yeah, well, and, and I think it, it can be, a, a more difficult concept for people to understand because we don't feed ourselves well <laughs> as a society. <laughs> That's true. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong about that. <laughs> we, just, we just don't feed ourselves that well. Um, and so we do try to, you know, some of us try to be healthier and supplement. <laughs> Pry is the key word there. <laughs> right. But one, one thing I, I do try to tell people that I think I, I, at least I hope most people can agree on is, is the equating that to say fruit juice, because fruit juice, juice, we, some people think is really healthy and others of us know that it is really, really not because you think, okay, apple juice, apple, apples are healthy. But when you take the juice from the apple and you discard the flesh of the apple that you're discarding a ton of nutrients, most notably fiber, which is yep. going to protect your body from, I say protect, but it, it uh, very, very complex syntheses and digestion in the body. Yeah. Um, the fiber kind of protects it some from all of the, the natural sugars from, you, you know, the fruit to protect yeah. from excess glucose spikes and blah, 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 blah. So when you remove all of that, you're just left with glucose spikes, <laughs> nothing, nothing to defend from it. So that's Absolutely. kind of like how I try to get, kind of get people's heads around that idea of removing one piece from a plant yeah. and saying, well, this is the only part of the plant you need. That's, that's just not true. It's just not true. Right. Right. Absolutely. No, I, I totally agree. With that. That's a really good analogy, by the way. I, I hadn't thought about that previously, but that's, that's fine. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, and maybe you can indulge me on a couple of questions that... Sure. Uh, I, just from feeding your own dog and going through the experience of working with all these different formulators, when somebody like myself, who mm -hmm. pretty much exclusively feeds commercial raw foods to my dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time. I would love to be a DIY raw feeder, but yeah. um, uh, it's, just, it's just not feasible in my current life state. Sure. So she pretty much exclusively eats commercial raw foods. Um, and I know, and I'm sure you know, that when we freeze a food, um, we are going to need to probably, there's probably going to be a couple of supplements that we're going to need to add to that just to make sure like everything is robust, like fats, oils, I'm thinking omegas, maybe vitamin E is depleted through freezing. Is that, is there anything that you just blanket recommend to supplement with your food to just kind of give it that extra oomph? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so there's nothing that actually needs to be added to our food from a, you know, from a perspective of making sure that it's complete and balanced. Um, there is some sort of, you know, some amount of nutrient degradation um, from freezing 
but with the turnaround times that we have in terms of like knowing when we're making the food to when it's arriving to you and like when you're going to be feeding it, um, at least hopefully within the intervals that we recommend, um, then, you know, if you're feeding it sort of like on a sort of basis of assuming that it's coming in and you still want to feed it fresh, um, there, there's nothing that would actually make it not complete balance. With that being said, yeah, I think you raised some good points about just in general, there are certain nutrients that are a little bit more fragile. There are some things that we do there to make it uh, more uh, like uh, we, we try and like, you know, combat this fragility in some ways. So I think a good example of that is like with omega-3s. I think like one thing in regards to omega-3s is you mentioned like fish oil, for example, right? Like it doesn't definitely doesn't fare well um, in terms of like cooking it for sure. And it does mm, not super great in terms of freezing. So what we have found is that um, like we use um, actually like an omega-3 fish oil like powder. So for example, like it's anchovies and sardines. And what they do is they stabilize it amongst like a powder um, from like a sort of like a natural fiber to actually make sure that it's, it's less likely to uh, be so fragile or oxidize or go rancid. Etc. prior to being added into our food. Um, so for we do feel pretty good about the omega-3 levels in our food. We also add like things like mussels. Um, so for example, like, you know, blue lip mussels and green lip mussels, which are going to be less of a concern from a fragility standpoint than like just raw fish oil. Um, but, you know, like there's, if you add a little bit of fish oil to our food, it's not going to hurt. We just don't recommend adding a ton of it <laughs> to like overdo the omega threes by any means. But yeah, it's a good example. That is so interesting, and I'm so glad I asked that question because <laughs> I did not know that about your food about the yeah. um, like powder. I, I don't even know that I've heard of that before. So thank yeah, you. It's, yeah, it's actually um, to be completely honest, I don't I don't know anyone else who is doing it. Um, but yeah, it's something that we we actually like talk to your nutritionist during the formulation process because of exactly that issue. Um, the sort of like, I mean, besides fragility, even rancidity, like, I don't know if you've ever purchased a food and, you know, it had something like fish oil or collar oil or salmon oil. And then like after a couple of days in the fridge, you, you definitely like smell it a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's also part of the reason why um, not just from like making sure that as many omega-3s were going to be kept in as good form as possible, but also pets start turning their nose up to it <laughs> if it goes too long. So they can tell. <laughs> they do. I know. And I mean, it, it's something that I think most of us don't even think about. And um you know, I probably think about some things too much, but I mean, I even put like, like when I buy nuts for myself, cause I love cashews sure. and I put them in everything. I put them in yeah. salads and everything. I put them in the freezer because they will go bad. Like I just, right. I can tell, you know, they sit on the pantry shelf too long and it's like, that's not good anymore. And it's just the natural oils from the nut, you know, nothing right. like crazy that, you most people wouldn't think about them going back, but I, I maybe I'm too sensitive to that too. I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, I never thought about freezing nuts, but that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm a weirdo, so hey, if I rub off on other people. <laughs> Hey, I mean, yeah, like we, we've recently started doing this as well. We don't like only buy fish oil that we we're putting in the fridge. We're making sure that it's in like glass jars, et cetera. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it does make a difference for sure. It it really <laughs> does. Um, and also putting a little bug in your ear. I don't know if you want to, you know, venture out and start making supplements, but that powdered, <laughs> powdered anchovy and sardines sounds really good. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe one day we have our plates full currently. No pun okay. intended. But... <laughs> okay, so I I have learned so much. Thank you so very much uh, for coming on and indulging me and in my questions, of course. But you know, I try to make sure that um, I'm asking people questions that not only I want to know, but I think listeners also want to know uh, more yeah. about. And these are certainly some things that I feel like come up very often, especially in, you know, the, the kind of group of people I try to 
hang out in and associate myself with because I feel like we are in that group where we are just, we know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think you guys know a lot. I mean, you definitely certainly know a lot, um, but that's what we actually recommend is just go out there and educate yourself. Um, it's super, super cool to see that there is um, a community of us that is becoming more and more um, outspoken about like our opinions and things like that and what we're learning in this space because it's so important that we're just share, share with others too as you learn. It, it <laughs> makes a big difference, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's, you know, I don't, I don't feel like there should be any gatekeeping. We want pets to be happy and healthy and um, I mean, obviously, there are things we have to charge for. Like you have to charge for the food. You can't give it away for free. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, I have to charge my clients to spend hours and hours and hours assessing different things for them. But it, you know, it, it, in general, like I just kind of try to go by the rule of thumb of you put your absolute best information out there for free and your tribe will find you. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's so much, there's so much information that like is out there in the world and like, you know, it's constantly evolving. I think just this field of nutrition in general, um, the knowledge base is, you know, pretty significant right now, but we're still learning so much more. There's so much more to be learned. Um, there's mm -hmm. definitely a ton of experts that are sort of on the cusp of, that are pushing that. Um, a lot of whom we look up to. And one thing that we've said as a company, um, is that, we're always dedicated. Like, I think this is a sort of our philosophy, which is like every bowl that we make is going to be better than the last. So our sort of dedication to everyone, you know, the community has been that we're always willing to take information, research, science, um, sort of as things come out, we're not going to be, you know, hesitant to change in our ways. If, you know, something says that we should use this ingredient instead of this ingredient, of course, we're going to be very transparent about, you know, why we're making these decisions. But that's, I think we, that's something that we are committed to doing because I think that's the only way that we can make sure that we're always providing the best for, for you guys. Very well said. So guys, make sure to check out Viva Raw. It is, I will put the link in the uh, show notes and use code TPPR for the Pet Parenting Reset to get a discount off your first box. <laughs> you will not regret it. And make sure to follow Viva Raw. You're everywhere. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You're on TikTok. Did I miss anything? You're on, are you anywhere else? <laughs> We we just started being on YouTube, but you can just follow us on those other ones. <laughs> well, no, we need to follow you on YouTube also. Of course we need to follow you on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We try to put out some, um, we try to, you know, provide some educational information. Um, but yeah, if you guys ever have questions about our food, about anything like that, I'll also mention like the first um, box. Um, I don't even know if you knew this, but the first order that you have with us is actually covered under like our clean bowl guarantee. It's just a little bit of a way that we try to make sure that you feel comfortable trying our food. But if for some reason, you know, it doesn't work for you, there are certain proteins that, you know, your cat or dog are pickier about, um, you can reach out to us or we'll work with you through it. And if for some reason it just still is not working, we just provide a refund for it. So um, that's sort of more reason you should try. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. More than most companies will offer. And so thank you for that. Um, okay. One more question before you go, yeah. and I promise I will let you go. Uh, yeah, just to kind of get, I don't know, I try, I, I sometimes forget, but I want <laughs> all of us to feel like friends, like we know each other. So sure. what have you read or listened to lately or even watched that was super interesting, super cool, something you loved, doesn't have to be pet related, uh, that you would recommend mm. for others? That's a good question. I'm trying to think about something. Um, I'm going to be honest, I haven't read that much recently, <laughs> just because we've been pretty, pretty busy. Um, I'm just thinking of what we've watched. Oh, what I watched last night. I love the new Planet Earth series. It's absolutely fantastic. It is really? jaw-droppingly good. Yeah. So, okay. oh, so, sorry, not Planet Earth. No. Is it called Planet? It's called Our Planet. Yeah. Sorry. Not Planet okay. Earth. Planet Earth is older, but Our our Planet, I think it's shot extremely well. 
very stunning. And it, yeah, I think the one we watched yesterday was about like migration, but like, you know, like basically, you know, ridiculously well constructed stories about nature and migration, like, like migrating animals and like, yeah, it's, it was fantastic. Sometimes you just wonder how they get the shots that they do. It's really like inspirational, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of hard work has, goes behind it, but yeah, check it out if you haven't. <laughs> Okay. Well, yes, check it out. I will. I, I can't promise. I, I am. I am a very sensitive soul. <laughs> yeah. And the, like seeing, I, I know it's natural. I know this is how <laughs> nature works and animals die and they kill other animals. Sure, I have a very, yeah. I just want to cry. <laughs> no, I, I definitely hear you. I mean, like I was like tearing up um, yesterday as well. It's, Sometimes it's difficult to to watch for sure, um, but yeah, it's it doesn't help that it t you tell yourself that it's just nature, you know, like the the way that they sort of depict like depict everything just makes it all the more you know harder to not cry during it. But it's it's still fantastic. So yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll check it out. I w I would much rather see you know horror story <laughs> horror, i'm horror. okay with i'm okay with people killing people <laughs> no i shouldn't say that <laughs> that's really funny on on tv not in real life <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's all what we were thinking yeah yeah <laughs> on tv not in real life i'm in <laughs> no way telling people to kill other people <laughs> let's be clear <laughs> All right. Well, thank you Amazing. so much, Zach. I appreciate yeah, you. Guys, make sure you check out Viva Raw. The link is in the description and use code TPPR for a discount on your first box. Thank you again, Zach. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help and um, great chatting with you. You too. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos in my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, 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 oh.